So doing it together a science project is something else that I also do, and uh, Juanma is also involved in that. And um, uh, doing it together a science project is a European project in which we try to um, connect different um, uh, different DIY bio communities in Europe. As already has been addressed before today, is that yeah there are a lot of initiatives, but it's very difficult to. Um, to connect them, and we try to do that within that project, and also talk to the policy makers and show them what's the importance of DIY bio and uh, citizen science. But today I'm uh, here uh, talking about the Bio Academy. So I'm Shamira, I'm also very uh, pleased to be here today uh, to talk about this project. Uh, I work in uh, Bath Society, which is based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and our first talk. Uh, a couple of, uh, yeah, a bit about what the ideology of the Ra Society is, and thereafter I will uh, talk about what the Bio Academy actually is. So, uh, Ra Society is an institute for art, science, and technology, and uh, we are based in this small castle in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, we investigate the role of um, uh, emerging technologies on society and in society. So what do people think of a certain technology? So uh, it start, started about 22 years ago when there was the first uh, public internet server in, in the Waag where people could really physically, on a digital way, uh, understand what uh, the internet was. So before that it was only used in academics um, you could read about it in the newspapers, but to really get an idea of what the internet was, you could uh, go to there, make a, a profile, uh, chat with people, and uh, yeah, send messages. And that way you get a much better idea of what the internet was, uh, instead of only reading of it. So that's what we do. We um, uh, look at emerging technologies and kind of physicalize them. Um, by doing uh, workshops or making internet platforms where we, people really can meet a certain technology. So we try to bridge the gap between science and society because we all know um, there is a problem in academia and I think that's what all brings us together here is that uh, the society cannot always reach um, a certain uh, <coughs> Yeah, a certain research because there are paywalls. You need, to, I, uh, for example, I have a friend. She cannot cannot even read her own article because the university doesn't pay for it. So yeah, it's kind of strange. <laughs> um, another problem is jargon. So the words that are used uh, are also not, um, yeah, underst always understandable for the society. Um, so that's what we're going to try to do. And another thing that. Um, thinks is really important is ownership. So if you have a certain uh, technological device like your telephone, you should be able to open it up and repair it. So that's why we are advocates of open science and open technology. And to do that, to really bring it to the people, we have these workshops, but we also have a fab lab. Um, we were one of the first ones in Europe. Um, and from that, uh, related to biology and related to um, uh, yeah, the biotechnological developments such as genetic modifications, we opened up a web lab. We have often artists or uh, students uh, asking around, like, I want to do a project uh, working with algae, I want to do something with uh, bacteria, but they go to a lab in an academic setting and they are not allowed to work there. Um, and yeah, so that's why we have the web lab. And recently we also opened up a textile lab, which is actually a combination of those two, because they, for example, uh, they use 3D printing on textiles, or they use bacteria to dye textiles with. So I think that's enough information about what our ideology is, and I think it relates to uh, all of us. So now a bit more about the Biohack Academy. So uh, this is the place where you can find all the information. Um, the Biohack Academy is, an, is a set of open source lab tools, and uh, it's really an academy where we, uh, in 10 weeks, learn people how to build, use, and share their own lab. 
So they are two days uh, a week visiting the Laag, and the rest of the week they can either do uh, the other job that they have to do to earn money or uh, work on the projects that they, uh, yeah, to, to develop their own bioacademy project. So to be able to build your own bio lab first, you of course need to know something about 3D design, something about laser cutting and 3D printing. So we start with uh, learning the participant those uh, skills. Um, you also need to know something about electronics. What is a resistor? How does a condensator work? Um, how do I solder? So we uh, also teach them those skills. Um, Arduino programming, of course, uh, not uh, also very important. And if you have all those things, yeah, then you are able to uh, build all the lab tools. Uh, but then you also need, uh, yeah, of course, there's a lot of hacks. Um, so you see that people they improve, they improve it, or they they change it to their own needs. Uh, but you also need to know how to use uh, those lab tools. So if you if you only can make them, yeah, I don't know if if you don't have a biology background, maybe you don't know how to work sterile or how to make uh, plates where I, I grow my bacteria on. So that's the next thing that we learn. Then we also learn them how to really work in a lab, what are lab rules, uh, safety precautions that you have to make uh, when you're working in a lab. And then, uh, when they also acquire those skills, they also do a personal project. So it's pretty intense, it's only 10 weeks we're talking about. And those are some examples of uh, personal projects. So on the left, upper left corner we see uh, kombucha, and there's a person uh, who uh, really looked at the staining properties of, of the material. Uh, someone did a more fun uh, experiment doing slime mold races. Um, people doing microfluidics and, and uh, the, the lower one, Aaron, he looked at how he could actually uh, look at the, def the, the growing, uh, yeah, the growth of plants and therefore he made an installation to, in a 360 manner, really uh, figure that out. And maybe you've already seen it, but, ah, I forgot something. One of the most important things, of course, is sharing. Uh, because you can make all these things, but if people don't really document their stuff, there's not really use of it. So we always want people to share what they do, um, which is sometimes also very challenging. So if someone has an idea how to solve it, please tell me, because uh, what we often notice is that people say, yeah, my, uh, my documentation is not good enough, I should work a bit more on it, and then in the end, it doesn't happen. Um, so, yeah, we have our own documentation of all the uh, open source designs, but if people make improvements, we, of course, also want to uh, have them uh, included. And maybe you yeah, already saw it, see it. We, uh, do this pro uh, project not only in Amsterdam, but we do it together with uh, partner labs. So every Biohack Academy has different partner labs. So these are some of the previous editions. But uh, right now, for example, uh, we also have a lab in Tokyo. Uh, Shenzhen is involved, Perth and uh, Seoul. Uh, so, yeah. Um, also to kind of spread the program all around the world, uh, we, we have those uh, partner labs. And uh, this is a bit more detail of the course, so how does it work? So every week starts with a, with a lecture, and in the lecture, it's a two hour uh, lecture in which all the partner labs, they connect via, yeah, they go to meetings, so it's like a, a Skype meeting. Uh, so everybody has the lecture at the same time, and then you uh, get all the details that you need to build a certain device. So every week a new device is introduced, um, uh, and therefore you also need some theory. And also related to the device, you need to have some uh, workshops, so they are also uh, included. So that's how the yeah this uh, this uh, the course is uh, set up. But uh, it has been developed by us at the Lab Society, which is just a small group of people, and I don't think that's such a good thing. I think we, we really need to improve the, 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 
the course because I think because it's open design and there are a lot of people here in the room, I already heard it with the speed dating, there's so many people here that have much more knowledge than I do uh, and my Peter, uh, my colleague Peter van Bohem have. Uh, there are people that have probably much better designs than we have. Um, so therefore, um, it would be very nice if, I really need you, it would be very nice if you could contribute to the program to really, uh, yeah, to make it better. If you would be able to, to teach a certain subject that you are very good in, if you would have a, a better design than we have, please, please share it. I would love to in, include it. And my, uh, like my dream would be that the Bayard Academy becomes some kind of like a gosh academy. And that, uh, yeah, everybody um, is able to uh, contribute to it and to make it really like a community-based program which is much stronger than something that is only developed by a couple of people. So, thank you for your attention and I hope we can exchange much more after this.